Up ahead and off to the side, I see a shaded area near the tunnel entrance where some chairs and umbrellas have been set up, and the man I came to see is sitting on a camp chair casually reading a newspaper. He's wearing a leather jacket and a brown hat, his wardrobe for the upcoming scene where he and his gang rob a train and make off with the payroll. Mr. Cagney, I say as I reach him. He looks up, shading his eyes as he squints at me curiously. That's me, he says. Joe Bernardi, studio publicity, I say, sticking out my hand. We shake, his grip is firm as I knew it would be. He smiles and nods toward the empty chair beside him. Yeah, Bogey told me about you. Says you're a straight shooter and that's good enough for me. Sit down, kid. If I'm not interrupting. He shakes his head. No chance of that, he says as he removes his wire-rimmed eyeglasses and sticks them in his shirt pocket. He's put on weight since he hoofed his way through Yankee Doodle Dandy and his red hair is starting to turn gray, but the knowing smile and the Irish cockiness are still intact. This is still the bantam-sized mick that blew away Bogart in half the pictures they appeared in together. Welcome back to Warner Brothers, I say. It's been a long time. Seven years, he says. A lot of pictures come and gone, some good, some pretty bad. And this one looks like it could actually be a winner. I never wanted to work with that prick Warner again, but good scripts are hard to come by these days. Even harder are good parts. I like this one. He's talking about Cody Jarrett, a psychotic killer with a mother fixation. The picture is called White Heat, and the studio has high hopes for it. Cagney's back on screen doing what he does best, and if the director, Raoul Walsh, doesn't screw it up, it has all the earmarks of a hit. I've got a long list of people who want to talk to you, Luella and Hedda, naturally, Variety and The Reporter, some of the big city dailies. He waves his hand dismissively as he shakes his head. Nah, forget that stuff. I've got nothing to say. I'm just a mug trying to make a living. Well, Look Magazine wants to do a picture spread. Something like uh, Cagney on film, the ultimate gangster, Cagney at home, loving husband and father. He looks at me in disbelief. What? You mean these people would be traipsing all over my house taking pictures bothering my kids? <laughs> Bill would take a frying pan to me. He laughs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that she would. Bill is Cagney's wife of 27 years. They were married when they were performing together in vaudeville, and most people agree it's an atypical marriage for Hollywood. Most people also agree that Bill rules the Cagney household with a smile and gentle hand, and Jimmy is happy to let her do it. Okay, I say, forget the homebody angle, but I still think you've got a story to tell, Mr. Cagney. I read the first draft of the script, and you've added a lot to your character. Oh, you mean the loony stuff? Yeah, I did a little fixing here and there. Otherwise, Jarrett's just a rehash of all the palookas I played 15 years ago. Well, it's something to talk about, I say. We'd get a lot of ink. Forget it, kid. Pretty soon they'd be saying Cagney's gone highfalutin' on us, with all that psychological crap. Let me play the part and the people out there, he waves his hand. My people. They'll let me know if I got it right. I shrug, resigned. You're the boss. Nah, Juan is the boss. The prick. 